Stephen Marcus. I'm president and CEO of Health Foundation of South Florida. So in this position, I divide my duties into two sides. One is the infrastructure running a business side, mm -hmm. and what is our mission side. Okay. So in the infrastructure side, we have the same issues of any for-profit or non-profit business. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, ma uh, manage our finances. We have to manage our investments. We have to have great communication with the public. We have to have great communication with our constituents, mm -hmm. the folks that we are supporting. We have to have great uh, relationships with partnerships, um, which means that we try to leverage what we do in our grant making with other funders. We have um, all of our record keeping, mm -hmm. uh, all of our information technology, all of those things I believe are the business side. Mm -hmm. The other side, our mission side, translates to things like our grant making program and where we focus. It translates to our convening and how we organize certain summits, conferences, meetings, and that's where we partner with a lot of other community-based organizations, sometimes their government. Mm -hmm. In the uh, Robert Wood Johnson Culture of Health Award, that was just uh, 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 done by the, um, uh, selected by the community, we actually partnered with the health department. Mm -hmm. And the health department under the direction of Lillian Rivera has been a great partner. Mm -hmm. And I consider, by the way, I wanna make sure this is on the record, I consider Dr. Rivera a community health treasure from Miami-Dade County. Mm -hmm. So the foundation is what a lot of uh, uh, organizations that were nonprofit hospitals um, happen to evolve to. We call it legacy foundations. Okay. So a legacy foundation means we came from the development of a hospital. Mm -hmm. Hospital was sold as a nonprofit to a for-profit. Okay. The funds that were received for the sale had to be returned to be used for the good of the community. Mm -hmm. It could no longer be used for the hospital because the hospital was in the for-profit business. Right. So it had to be used for nonprofit purposes. Mm -hmm. And this is where Health Foundation was born. When the sale was made, actually there were two different um, times in which there were transactions, an initial transaction that sold about 53% of the hospital uh, stock and then the other 47% happened about eight years later. Mm -hmm. It aggregated to what became, or what is now, our endowment. Mm -hmm. We have an endowment of about $134 million. Mm -hmm. And that endowment produces interest and investment income mm -hmm. every year. And we use that to put back into the community. Okay. And so having this uh, investment has allowed us to um, decide how broad our programs can be, mm. how much, or how many organizations we can support, how many staff we can hire, mm -hmm. and we've tried to grow proportionately to the size of our endowment. Okay. Well, we've we have some major grants okay. that are underway okay. that have fallen into the area of being strategic. Mm -hmm. So we have sides of grants where you can go online mm -hmm. and you can look at our focus areas. And I know you were going to ask me a question about that in a little bit, about mm -hmm. what year and so forth. But I want to focus on the other side of that, which is our strategic grants. Okay. So in our strategic grants, we take long-term initiatives of anywhere from five to seven years. And we try to make that, instead of the organization telling us what it wants to do, we have a prescriptive, evidence-based practice that we want the organization to do. And believe me, it's not easy implementing and replicating evidence-based because our community is so diverse yeah. and has so many unique challenges with language, with culture, and so forth. Um, it takes a lot to convert um, what you see working in one place into another. And so um, this, this entire um, evidence-based uh, strategies were used in our Healthy Aging Regional Collaborative mm -hmm. and in our current um, activity, which is what we call our place-based Live Healthy Partnership Initiatives. Okay. And so what does place-based mean? Place-based means that currently when somebody gets a responsive grant, it might be in Homestead, it might be in North Miami, 
it might be on one particular aspect of health, but we do it for a year or two, and then it's sort of a completed transaction and often doesn't have a life of its own. Mm. In the play space, we go into specific neighborhoods or municipalities, and we form a council of people who are residents and stakeholders there. Mm -hmm. And in that organization of that host council, we deal with a host agency that helps coordinate all that. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we went through a process of selection, and we limited this just to Miami-Dade County, uh, in, in a process of selection of two different communities. And at the end, we decided that we wanted to focus on a community that was going to be uh, managed with a host agency by a city and one by a nonprofit. And we also wanted to have strong representation of the underserved community and knowing that we have a very um, high need African American community. Mm -hmm. We wanted to meet their needs by going into an African American community. We also wanted to recognize the Hispanic population of our community and we felt we wanted to go into a community that had a core uh, Hispanic majority. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we asked these, all the different um, organizations, which were about 12 different places, um, some cities, some nonprofit neighborhoods. And when we did that, we found two that we really felt comfortable with. And we chose Little Havana mm -hmm. and Miami Gardens. So we had those two. Our Little Havana program actually morphed into being coordinated by the city of Miami. Mm -hmm. And so both of our places have um, municipalities. It's, it's a total of seven million. Right. It's a total of million, so it's three and a half million per community. I had no idea that someone was actually nominating me for the award. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to hear that I was receiving from the National Parks and Recreation Association the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Health Equity Award. Mm -hmm. um, the Health Equity Award speaks about health equity in parks and open spaces. Mm -hmm. And one of our major focus areas is physical activity mm -hmm. and making sure that people have an opportunity to access quality open space and parks mm -hmm. to get that activity. Mm -hmm. So we have been working for many years with not only Miami-Dade and Broward County Parks, but we have also been very active in working with all the municipalities in the counties and their own parks. And we have done some very interesting um, programs, after-school programs for kids in the parks. We have done programs for creating what we call fitness zones, which is almost like an outdoor athletic club uh, setting up different machines for folks to uh, en uh, access and, and have a good workout. We've been doing special programs in the parks like Fit to Play for groups of children. Mm -hmm. um, we have done some parks for people with disabilities and children with disabilities. So they have access to that as well. And um, we've done things in the food side as well. We've done farmers markets. Mm -hmm. Um, we've tried to um, contribute to uh, family activities in the parks, mm -hmm. walking trails, building walking trails. Um, we've worked with some organizations to do um, edible forests. I know we have an edible forest in a park. And I think one of our biggest initiatives is our healthy aging initiative. And we had, in particular, a number of activities in the parks um, one of the interventions in our healthy aging program is what we call falls prevention mm. because people who are, uh, go from being independent people and then have a bad fall often become very dependent on other family members. Yeah. Yeah. And the switch is amazing from when they were taking care of grandchildren to now they had to be taken care of. Yeah. And in falls prevention, we can find people who have orthopedic issues, Parkinson's issues, stroke issues.